Good morning. Welcome, everybody. This is the session about uh, the programs in the School of Nursing. So it um, is really great to see a pretty full room. We're uh, really glad that you and your children are interested in our program programs at Western. <coughs> I'm Marianne Cron, and I'm the program in year two coordinator for the BSCM program at the Fanshawe site, which may seem a little odd, <laughs> anyways. But I'm also a graduate of Western, so this is uh, and for our program, um, where as Justin will describe, we're all dual citizens of both Western and Fanshawe. So we have a number of students here with us today. They are here to answer your questions and tell you what the program is really like. Um, <laughs> a few smiles over there. And also, um, my colleagues are with me today. I'm going to start off the presentation. And then Abe Uchtorn is going to continue. And we also have Denise Litson, our academic counselor. So for those of you who are, who are um, in another room or um, even people in the room who would like to ask a question, please email this. Jess over here is going to manage the questions. And we'll have time for questions from all of you uh, when we're finished our presentation. You only need to email the questions. If you would rather email them in that form, you can ask them. I'll run around with a microphone at the end, uh, like I'm hosting a talk show or something. <laughs> OK, so there we go. So uh, our School of Nursing here was established in 1920, and it was one of Canada's first university-based nursing programs. Fanshawe College also has a long history of nursing education, dating back to the 1800s. And uh, in uh, I guess the 70s, the hospital schools of nursing went into the college system. And then we started our collaborative relationship uh, with our first class admitted in 2001. 2001, and our first collaborative class um, graduated in 2005. <clears throat> so the vision to be recognized as a leader in innovative healthcare education, research, practice, and policy. And the purpose of our programs is to enable students to um, successfully complete the NCLEX RN exam. So what we do is make sure that our graduates meet the entry to practice competencies that have been um, set in stone by the College of Nurses of Ontario. We have two undergraduate programs here leading to a BSCN. That's the collaborative program and the compressed time frame program. And we'll have more information about both as the session continues. And graduate programs, we have a Master of Science in Nursing. We have a Master of Nursing. NP program and uh, an opportunity to do a doctorate or a PhD in nursing. Just some pictures of the clinical education suite. Many of you have already been up there, I think. Um, and are there still tickets later for going up there? I'm not sure. Oh, they're sold out. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a popular place. And I'm sure our students will tell you more about the learning opportunities that they have there. So just a little bit about it. It is a simulated hospital unit and home environment. It uh, allows students to practice with simulated mannequins, fancy computerized mannequins, in a, in a safe, risk-free, really, environment. Because you know the, the scenario will go on, but if there's some kind of glitch in the care, the outcomes aren't, um, we're not with a real person, so the outcomes aren't negative for that person. And we also have some interdisciplinary practice opportunities in that lab to simulate the care that any client would get as part of a healthcare team. Uh, our students have also participated in the annual flu clinics through the health units. And this is a picture of one of our students um, giving someone their flu shot. So applicants for the collaborative program require a grade 12 diploma. And I'm sure all of you are aware of this. These are the required courses, uh, grade 11 math, grade 12 U English, 12 U biology, 12 U chemistry, all with a minimum grade of 65%. Oh, and we get questions about the grade 12 math course. 
So um, if you're taking a grade 12 U math, we will consider that as well because it is a higher math course. Another picture of our students in the clinical education suite. So this is the structure of the program. Students who start at the Western site continue here for all four years of the program. If you start with us at Fanshawe, you're at Fanshawe for two years, come over here for year three. And we have some students with us today who started with us at Fanshawe and are now in uh, year three here. And they'll tell you a little more about that. If you do start at Fanshawe, you do get a Fanshawe student card, or get, of course you do, a Western student card and a Western student ID number, which gives you access to Western facilities as well. And everybody has a bus pass included in their um, package. Just a bit about the year one courses. Um, foundations, uh, there's a number of courses. Uh, the first three are nursing courses. Holistic Health Assessment is our professional practice course, and that's exactly what it's about, uh, learning the kinds of assessments nurses need to do in their everyday practice with clients and families. Our science courses in year one are anatomy and physiology. And we also have a writing course for our students that is delivered by the writing programs that both sites specifically focused and developed for uh, our nursing students. Year two, the class is divided in two. So one half of the year is health promotion and caring with families and communities theory and professional practice. So students are out in a community working with a family. The other half of the year is health promotion and caring supporting health. Again, theory and practice. Uh, that course is about understanding uh, the experience of illness, um, concepts related to chronic illness, um, you know, people who need uh, some support in their everyday lives. We also have a course in nursing information literacy in the fall. That's followed by a research methodology course in the winter. Our science courses are pathology and uh, pharmacology and therapeutics. And those are pretty well online. Pathology has a face-to-face -face tutorial. Pharmacology is online. And this is the first opportunity to take an elective in the program. And students can take an elective of their choice as long as it fits in their nursing timetable. But it's free choice. And another picture of our student preparing um, to change dressing in the lab. So I'm going to hand it over to Abe now, and he'll tell you about the rest of the program. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, so as Marianne mentioned, my name is Abe Outsort, and I am the year four coordinator in the School of Nursing and uh, also have a privilege of being associate scientist with Lawson Health Research, uh, which is great because uh, everything we do is evidence-based, and so we really try to connect uh, the research and the practice. So uh, the courses I'm going to tell you about now are courses in theory. Uh, so this is a new curriculum that we've been developing. And so years three and year four are currently in development. Uh, so this is what we are planning. This is what they're going to look like. Uh, but we have less of the details for these. Uh, so in uh, year one and year two, uh, we've talked about uh, what health looks like, what healthy people look like, how to do those assessments, how to work with people in community contexts with those with chronic disease. In year three, we're looking to those who are really ill. Uh, so this uh, has more of a focus on uh, acute care settings and uh, people with, uh, with uh, active uh, disease and uh, episodic illness. Uh, so that's what the focus is in terms of the theory and the professional practice for this year, as well as uh, there's an opportunity to look at global health. So at uh, Western, there's a big focus on internationalization and opportunities to look at uh, health uh, outside of our own borders. And so there's a course for this, as well as uh, an opportunity to take a, a global health elective. Uh, which would be more of a, a practicum experience uh, as well, which is uh, an optional elective. Also do uh, some data analysis in terms of what I said about the research side of things and microbiology and immunology as the science uh, focused course for this year and some more elective opportunities. Then year four, which is uh, as the year four coordinator is the year that I spend a lot of my focus on. In uh, Western, we're really proud of our students uh, in terms of, of graduating the leaders, uh, of nursing leaders for the future. 
And a lot of our students do go on to leadership positions, whether that's within advanced practice, nurse practitioner roles, whether it's going on to graduate studies or administrative roles, uh, something that we're pretty proud of. And so in the fourth year, we do do some work looking at leadership and professional development uh, and what that means in a healthcare context. Uh, in terms of the professional practice side, in fourth year, it's much more dependent on your own interests. And so uh, the placements, we have a rank ordering process where you identify what it is you're interested in. Uh, so the first three years, everyone's doing uh, the same kind of practice opportunities. Fourth year, it's if you want to branch out into community, into primary care, into mental health, into uh, operating room, whatever it is that uh, you're personally interested in is where you will then focus uh, your interest for fourth year. Uh, as well as uh, some focus on looking at transition into practice and so we want to make sure that our students are prepared to be successful as they make that transition from student life to full-time working life and uh, so we have a course to assist them in that as well and uh, your final elective opportunity. Another opportunity we have available for our students is uh, an accelerated year four. And so what this is, is instead of doing your coursework in the fall winter, is uh, you do your coursework in the summer for fourth year and then your final practicum in the fall term. So basically you are finished uh, a semester earlier. And this is just an opportunity for students who, if they, can, if they don't need to work in the summer, um, they can do this to get out a little bit earlier and uh, write their NCLEX a little bit earlier and uh, be out in the workforce uh, a little bit earlier as well. Uh, so that's an opportunity that is open to all of our students uh, as long as you've uh, met the requirements for year three, you can apply for that accelerated program. The other opportunity we have is the compressed time frame program. So if you uh, are here today and you decide not to go directly into nursing, maybe you decide to go into one of our other health sciences or other programs, uh, and then later in your career, you want to come back into nursing and uh, you already have um, a number of university level credits. Uh, we have a compressed time frame program which is uh, concentrated through five semesters year round and, uh, and you go through a, a very similar program uh, to what we outlined but uh, in a much faster time period. And so that's an option to keep in mind if you don't go into nursing right, uh, right into this incoming year that you can come back and uh, join us uh, later. And uh, Denise uh, can always connect with you about what particular courses you have to, to make that happen. So this is our contact information. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, I, I strongly recommend using the website. Everything is on there that you could possibly need uh, in terms of uh, answering questions that uh, you have. Uh, so do spend some time looking around there uh, if you have particular questions for the program. Uh, so before we get into questions from the email and from the audience, uh, we do have a wonderful panel of students who are here to, uh, to talk about their experience within the program and, uh, and the wonderful things that uh, nursing has meant to them. Hi there, um, I'm Brianna Jackson, so I'm a first year student at the Western site. Um, I'm originally from Whitby, Ontario, if any of you guys know that area, it's just east of Toronto. So um, here at Western, a lot of people have asked me what made me decide to come to this nursing program. Uh, I've been in, interested in nursing since before grade nine, so I've actually come to every fall preview day that was offered while I was in high school. So I'm a bit of a keener, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I definitely fell in love with Western and uh, every year when I came, came back it just uh, confirmed for me that this was the place for me. Um, there is definitely a, a wonderful reputation of the nursing program here at Western. Um, I, I love the campus atmosphere. Um, hopefully many of you guys have experienced that while you've been here. Everyone's very friendly and welcoming and uh, open. Hopefully people have been able to answer your questions, uh, which is great. Um, the staff and the faculty are, are so friendly and uh, I visited the uh, university fair as well and uh, while I was there they were always able to answer my questions and uh, were really positive about the program and that really stood out to me. Finally, um, residents here at Western I feel is so far above uh, the programs offered at other universities and that was really important to me um, living in residence. Um, that may not be an issue for all of you, but 
it definitely is important because you are living here as well as studying. Um, in terms of my experience uh, at the program so far, I absolutely love it. Um, I think there's a good balance between theory and practical. Um, they sort of ease you into it. We started learning how to take vital signs. I've been practicing uh, taking blood pressure on everyone on my floor in residence, so it's good. <laughs> um, but it's definitely uh, a welcoming environment. Um, I, I'm always able to talk to my professors. Um, so that's been really, really great. Um, it's a close-knit community as well. Um, at each site in first and second year, there are only 125 students, so you get to know people pretty fast and work with them. So that's really nice. Um, anything else? I don't think so. So I guess I'll pass it on. Um, hi, I'm St. Camille Alexandrian, and I'm from the Fanshawe site. I'm also first year, and I'm on student council as well. And I find that both sites um, offer a lot to me. Uh, I'm on residence, actually, at Fanshawe, and I love it there. I found it really interesting. But I also do definitely feel a part of Western. My Frosh week was amazing here. And I think everyone here is extremely friendly. And um, as Brianna said, the props and everything are amazing. I think first year is definitely not a big jump from high school for nursing. I found that I was very comfortable in it. and. I really like the people there, and I'll still be able to get involved in things like council, which was really fun because I got to meet a lot of cool people from that. So yeah, I think if you come to Western, you'll definitely love the school spirit here, and you'll love the program just because it's very, um, it's very hands-on as well as you can speak to your prof about anything, and they answer all your questions. So I think you're in a very comfortable setting. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Western. My name is Akua Frempong, and I'm in second year at the Fanshawe site. And so I guess what well, you're all wondering, why choose nursing at Western? Of every school in Ontario, why choose to come to Western or Fanshawe for that matter? Well, um, for a couple years now, Western has been named the number one student experience of all universities in the entire country. Meaning that when you come here, you feel like it feels like home. Um, you get really integrated well into the Western spirit, I guess. Our O week is also the largest in Canada. So in terms of that really big first um, jump away from home, integrating yourself into Western and both Fanshawe. Um, I think personally for me, I really didn't know that I wanted to go here until I actually stepped foot on campus, which I think is a really, really, really important aspect, whether you're applying at the Fanshawe site or the Western site, even though we always tell people to apply to both. Um, it's really been an amazing experience. I feel once, as soon as first year ended, it's like, yes, I can do this, because I feel like once you get past first year, everything's kind of like, okay, I see what I'm going to be doing in the next couple of years. I can see myself being a nurse, which is very important. Um, nursing, I wouldn't say it takes a lot out of you, but it's a lot of commitment. Um, you are essentially signing up to be responsible for a very large population of people. Um, you are the first contact in healthcare. I like to say you're also the most important contact in healthcare, but some people would argue differently. Um, nurses are amazing, and I feel like being at Western and being in this program has really taught me all the reasons as to why. Um, for those of you who are um, also thinking about the Fanshawe site, I love being at Fanshawe. I like when it's really cold outside and I just want to get inside and go to my class. I can do that and be in one building um, <laughs> in terms of navigation. Uh, the residence there is great. Um, I personally lived off campus, so if those of you who are really wondering how am I going to really be um, integrated into Western um, or Fanshawe living off campus, um, there's a lot of opportunities. Um, you have a lot of upper year students who are willing to help you at any time. Um, so kind of like softs and stuff like that. Um, I was very fortunate to be a first year rep on council last year and I loved it so much I came back and I'm now the Western Fanshawe liaison. Um, so I love being on council, I love being at Western, and I love being at Fanshawe. Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm a second year student as well at the Western site. Um, so I'm from London, so I also live at home. I didn't go to residence at all which I thought might make it a bit more difficult to meet people, but because of the really small class sizes of like 12 to 18 people, it's really easy to get to know people still, and you do become really close with the people in your entire class, in the entire program, because you see them all the time, every day. You hang out with them, you see them on the weekends. So um, I really like Western. It is a great school. It is really big, and it does take a while to get used to all the different buildings because we aren't in one building at Western. You do have to travel a lot. Um, but you do get used to it, and some of the like the simulation lab here is amazing. I'm in that right now for this semester, and it's so cool. I love working with the mannequins. They are really creepy, 
but they are really awesome. They're so cool, all the different things that they can do. Um, so yeah, I really like being here, and I'm glad that I chose Western. Well, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Justin Toth. I'm the Nursing Student Council President for the 2013-2014 year. And basically, my job is just to tell you uh, how awesome it is to be here. Um, I started both at the Fanshawe site, and then I came over here to the Western site. And literally, what everyone today will tell you is there's no difference. You don't lose anything by starting at one site or the other. It is an awesome experience that everybody gets to take part in if you come to our school. Um, why did I choose nursing? Um, well, there's like 10 guys to 125 chicks. <laughs> like, why not? But, but seriously, it's all about, like, I like, I like medicine, but at the same time, I don't want to be a doctor because I'm a very social person, so I like interacting face-to-face -face with people. So nursing is that best, the best thing you can do. If you're a people person, you love to help people, you love volunteering, but you also like medicine and medical sciences, come to nursing because it is one of the great, it's the best thing that I have ever decided to do. And honestly, I could have done a lot of other things, but this is probably the best choice I have ever made. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, students, for uh, taking the time on the Saturday when assignments are due. It's a busy time of year for you, so thank you for, for coming and being here and sharing your perspective as well. Uh, so we do now uh, invite you to, uh, to ask your questions, and uh, we've, got, uh, we've got some coming in from the email, so, uh, or we don't have any yet. So if you are... Yes, if you are watching on video there from the other room, uh, you are welcome to email your questions here, and, uh, and we'll take any questions from the floor in this room. Um, so I was wondering, sweet. <laughs> I was wondering if Western has anything that would help for a pediatric nurse, like if you want to end up specializing. I know year four is when you start doing that, but. Yeah. So that's a great question. Uh, yes. Yeah, so year four is really when you get to pick what it is that you are passionate about and you want to do. Uh, and so, uh, like I said, that final placement in, in particular, it's full time. You're doing 432 practice hours. Uh, you're in there for full time shifts for that uh, full semester. And you're uh, ranking where you would like to most work. Uh, so if you are passionate about pediatrics, uh, that's an opportunity to do that. Um, and, uh, and as well, uh, we have traditionally, and uh, hope that this uh, continues, had a relationship with Sick Kids in Toronto, which is uh, where we have some of our pediatric placements in addition to the many that we have here in town. Thanks, Dave. Just to add to that, my background is pediatric nursing. So just to let you know, we have a lifespan approach in our program as well. So even though that placement opportunity is, exists in year four. We may have some in year three as well, but you learn about children and growth and development and working with children across the program as well. What is your expected uh, entrance requirements, like grade? We don't have the applicant pool yet, so the average has not been determined, but we always say to students to strive for a high 80. So strive for an 88% or better um, would give you a good opportunity to get into the program. Again, though, we don't know what that average will be yet. Okay, a uh, web-based question. Do nursing students all stay in the same residence? I know at Western, they don't all stay at, in the same residence, but Delaware does have a floor for nursing students. Um, for this next current year, though, however, it won't, and they are putting them into another residence and trying to keep them on a floor the same because they're doing renovations at Delaware. So no, not necessarily all in the same residence, and Marianne will talk about the Fanshawe side. Actually, I'll get the students to talk about it. Okay, so I didn't personally live in residence at Fanshawe, but two of my good friends there, so I would say I was like the fifth unofficial roommate. So how it was for them is that um, when they initially applied, um, you will have the opportunity to do this as well when you're at Western. You can pick someone to be your roommate, um, so you can kind of do like a request. So 
my two friends, they kind of requested um, each other. And then because it's a room of four, they also got paired with two other nurses. So this is not guaranteed. It's not that, oh, if they say, OK, here's a nursing student. Let's all put the nurses together in one room. It just depends on the lottery system and what rank you are in residence. However, if you do want to be with somebody who you also know is going into nursing as well, you can request that person. Just about residents at Fanshawe, um, just to make it clear, all first year nursing students at Fanshawe are still guaranteed residents. And in my experience, the guys in residence weren't put together, but most of the girls in residence, it was like a room of four nurses or like three nurses. So usually if they see you're in nursing, they will usually put you together, unless you're a guy. <laughs> um, do you guys have a lot of nurses that proceed into med school afterwards? Uh, I'd say our nurses end up all over the place. Uh, so like I said, uh, we do focus uh, on leadership and success. And uh, so our students, because it's a fairly well-renowned program in the, uh, in the province at least, uh, our students get into all kinds of other opportunities. So actually this time of year, I'm writing countless uh, references for various graduate schools. Uh, and so that, uh, that can include medicine. That includes kind of a whole spectrum uh, of other opportunities. But yeah, we have we always have students who go on to medicine. Yes, we do. But that being said, um, we really would like to keep our young nurses in the profession as well. So there are many routes to get into medicine. Uh, grades are a really important part of that. As I think Akua said, one of our students said, the program is demanding in many ways, not just academically, but um, emotionally, psychologically, even physical with some of the physical work we do. So that's something to think about too. Um, but really, we would like to retain nurses in our profession for years to come. So, and we do have a nurse practitioner program. We mentioned that too. Uh, one more email question. If you want to move towards surgical nursing, is that possible through this program, or are you required to take additional programs? Uh, so I think when they say surgical, they mean operating room nursing, I'm assuming. Uh, we do have, of course, surgical uh, ward placements, which is just a part of uh, any uh, nursing that uh, you'll be doing through uh, third and fourth year. But uh, if you, you're specifically talking about operating room nursing, uh, we have had a relationship with LHSC uh, because you actually do need additional certification, but we've been offering an elective that allows the students to get that certification uh, for operating room nursing. We can't guarantee that. So that really depends on their hospital and their current uh, space because they actually pay, the hospital covers a significant fee for the students to do that. So it's not guaranteed, but we have been offering that. Thank you. Uh, just two quick questions. One, one was sort of, you know, you have the Fanshawe Western choice in terms of starting out. And why would you choose one or the other, or do you always recommend choosing both and then whatever you get in? And what's the difference maybe there in terms of criteria? The, uh, the other question I had was maybe just if we could get a little bit more information about international opportunities um, beyond just one course. Are there opportunities? I know some of the programs um, you can go overseas for you know, a semester or for a longer period of time um, overseas. So with choosing uh, this with deciding which site to choose, there is literally no difference. There's no benefit to choosing one or another. Nobody's going to you know, say, oh, you went to Western, so we're going to give you a job over the other person. You come out with the exact same degree. Everybody's degree has you know, the Western stamp on it. There's literally nothing, no difference. Like, I cannot find any difference between the two. In terms of international opportunities, the only that I know of as a student is there is a program called Med Outreach that some nursing students decide to go and do over the summer. So last year they um, went to Africa for four months and they helped uh, the healthcare system there. But in terms of global opportunities, I don't know about anything. Yeah, so there are, I mean, because Western has an international focus, there are a lot of uh, opportunities outside the program. Uh, so like Med Outreach and uh, there's, I mean, there's a whole ton of global health opportunities. You can do alternative spring break, those kind of things that you can do as a student, as any student at Western. Uh, with the, the new global health course and uh, the new global health elective, those are ones that are actually integrated right into the program. So uh, even if you don't just do that, there are kind of myriad other opportunities within Western as a whole. If you were planning on going to med school after, um, what year would you suggest to do the MCAT? Um, 
students who, who do go to medicine or try to get to medicine afterwards will start after third year. I don't think you can start doing the MCATs before that. Uh, I do want to stress, though, that within the nursing program, we do not offer the courses that are required or not required, but to make you successful on the MCAT. So there's um, biology, or there's an upper year biology, there's a chem course, and you have to take organic chemistry to be successful. And those are not courses offered in the program. You could choose them as an elective, but most times they will not fit into your program and they could be done as summer courses. So you need to keep that in mind that we're not a program that will offer those courses that are, are needed to be successful on that MCAT. Not to say that it can't be done, it's just a difficult route to do it. I just want to say one more thing about the exchange of the previous program. Nursing doesn't have an exact exchange program with somebody else like another faculty would with health sciences. They could go off somewhere else and do a year or a term somewhere. Nursing can't offer that because the um, requirements for nursing in every country are different, so it makes it very difficult to do that. Okay, with the two different sites, do you apply to Fanshawe and Western, or how exactly does that work? On the application, it's the same application on the OUAC site. It's two application choices. So you want to pick the Fanshawe side and you want to pick the Western side. And I strongly encourage students to do that because if nursing is really where you want to be, you're opening up yourself to more chances at a spot in the nursing program. You could get an offer to both sides and you could choose where it is that you wanted to start. But if Western is where you want to come, the Western Fanshawe program, then I would strongly encourage to do both sites. Um, Denise, another question. How many uh, students are accepted into each program every year? We take 125 students at each side, but within those 125, there's three pools of applicants. We have the high school applicants, we have the post-secondary group, and we have a mature category. So the percentage of seats are designated to the number of applicants to each of those three um, that were mentioned. And high school always gets the most seats because they're the bigger applicant pool. Last year, we had more than 3,200 applications for those 250 spots. So that's why I strongly encourage all students to apply to both sites. I spoke with Jordan previously about this. Um, I've been hearing a bunch of different things. But do you need pre-health uh, if you're going to the Fanshawe site? No, you don't, do not need pre-health sciences. The pre-health sciences program at Fanshawe is an opportunity for students that have already completed high school but may not have done the science credits or may have only did the, the not the grade 12 U type courses. And that's an opportunity for them to get those courses that are required. It's the only pre-health sciences program that we use in lieu of the high school requirements. So by taking that pre-health sciences program, which it's a good program, but it is a hard program, um, you are now in that post-secondary category. And to get in last year from that category, you needed a 3.9 GPA, which is almost perfect. So it's, that's why I stress about um, the high school, but you do not need it if you have the high school. Okay, one more back here. I just have two. Um, so I just want to make sure when you're applying online, Fanshawe is a university application or is it a college application? It's a university application. It's a university program. Fanshawe Western is a university program. Okay. And um, people said before that if you graduate from Fanshawe, it's not, you don't have honors. So they said that Nobody you has honors. We're not an honors program. We're a professional program. But you can still go on and do graduate work? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Just like Abe, um, I am also completing a number of references for graduate school for students who started at the Fanshawe site. And um, from both sites, our graduates go on with graduate scholarships uh, as well because of their academic success here in the program. Uh, regarding uh, both programs, well, the same program at both sites, how many hours each day do you spend in class? Um, well, I'm in first year right now, and I have about 15 hours of class a week, so it's not a lot. And I have uh, Tuesdays off, so I found myself with a lot of free time. So yeah, it's pretty good. 
That's only class time. Yeah, that's only stuff to do after class. Um, so in terms of second year, it changes a little differently because um, you have your classes on top of your professional practice. So I'm in families and communities right now. So I'm assigned to a family for the entire semester. And outside of class time, I'm responsible for going biweekly to see them. So that counts as other class time. So usually, if you're in professional practice, it's different for supporting health because you have labs and stuff. But I have 12 extra hours on top of what I already have for each of my classes. Um, also, it, it's important to note that in each year, you usually have uh, an online course. So you do need to devote time to doing that as well. So in first year, we have physiology right now. Um, so all of the information is online. So you have to devote time to that as well. Uh, year by year, how do the students get uh, practical experience in, in the various fields of uh, pediatrics, obstetrics, geriatrics, et cetera? We, uh, professional practice courses are in every year of our program and we try as best we can to uh, provide each of our students with uh, a broad range of professional practice experiences. With some of the specialty areas like uh, inpatient pediatrics or obstetrics, our clinical spots are limited because of the size of the units. So we do try our best. As Abe mentioned, we will have opportunities in uh, the upper years of the program. Because they are specialty, specialties, there is a special body of knowledge that's required to um, give good care in those areas. So um, we do try, and, and I guess for those areas too, you need some basic skills, some confidence in some basic nursing skills that you can then use in those specialty areas. So many of our placements are really dependent on um, our availability of placements out in practice areas. Hey, do you have anything to add? And, and so just to note that uh, in that, uh, particularly for the fourth year where students are uh, picking their placements, is uh, it's going to depend on what students are interested in. So if the entire class one year decides that they all want to do obstetrics. Uh, obviously, we won't be able to, uh, to feel, fulfill that for everyone in the class. So it, uh, it does depend somewhat on the interests of your, your colleagues as to if we're able to give everyone exactly the placement that they want. Um, a follow-up online. Can you just give a quick summary of when placements are done? So placement, there's first semester, first year, second semester, second year, whenever uh, they actually occur. So, so throughout the program, uh, and then it's semester to semester, it changes in terms of what days. So for example, uh, you might have Thursday, Friday, 12-hour shifts. You may have Tuesday, Wednesday, 8-hour shifts. You may be in the community working the hours around uh, whenever you're available. Um, and uh, Or you're in the final year where it's just full time. So you're going to be doing four days or two days, two nights. So they're occurring each semester yeah, during all semester starting their first year. Starting, yeah. So it's right through the program, professional practice, and uh, the days will just vary from placement to placement. One more here. Uh, thank you very much. I have two questions. You've made it very clear. The first question is relating to the two sites. So I'll, I'll mention my two questions, and you can answer them in whatever order you like. So the first question is relating to the two sites. Uh, you've made it very clear that the programs are the same, yet there are two sites and they're branded and they're described differently. So why is that uh, if the programs are the same? Number two, would you elaborate on your international connections and what that means for the students? Uh, so I'll do the international connections just because I'm holding the microphone. Uh, we uh, have a couple relationships. One is with Rwanda. We've helped them establish their first uh, baccalaureate program of nursing and are now working with them to uh, develop their graduate level nursing programs. Uh, and so that's been a long standing relationship that involves both research and, and practice with uh, Rwanda. Uh, we also have a relationship with Peru. Uh, so we've been having a group going down as a summer course uh, every year to, uh, to work with uh, hospital contacts uh, in Peru. Uh, we also have a relationship with the UK. Uh, so our director here is a visiting professor at the faculty there. We actually have some UK faculty joining us this week uh, as well. 
so those are, I would say, kind of our three premier international relationships. Uh, however, we also, as a school of health sciences, uh, tap into relationships that uh, other schools have. So our School of Medicine, for example, has other relationships as well uh, that, uh, that we can tap into. And uh, I'll hand over for Marianne for the other question. Thanks. And at our Faculty of Health Sciences, Human Services, and Nursing at Fanshawe, we have a relationship with uh, a community in Costa Rica at the moment. And then Fanshawe also has an internationalization uh, mandate as well. And um, we're still working on the, um, the negotiations, I guess, for our global health practicum course. But our, our Lawrence Kinlan School of Business, for example, has relationships in Ireland, in Hong Kong, in various places. Our horticulture program has a relationship in Italy. So there are international opportunities um, that we're still exploring for our program and for our placement. As for the two sites, I'll, I'll just say a few words and then I'll see if the students want to say anything. What I would say is, Yes, we're a college, we're Fanshawe College. This is a university, we're one program. Students or applicants need to go to the program and the school where they feel most comfortable. So, you know, if you go to Queens or McMaster and something there just tugs at your heart and this is this is where I feel like I I'm going to be successful, then by all means go there. Or it could be Conestoga, it could be Mohawk. Um, yeah, we're the same, we're different. Why, are you asking why is nursing in a college? Okay. Yeah, if I may, it, it just, it, it allows us to double our enrollment. And so we use the two sites, same program, same curriculum, same, uh, same degree, but the two sites lets us double the size that we're able to offer. And I can give a bit of history about that. Uh, way back, I can't remember the exact date, the uh, government decided, and along with the College of Nurses, that a BSCN would be the requirement for entry to practice and to write the registration exam. So at that time, I think there were something like 16 university programs and 22 or 24 college programs. So every college program now to, that leads to an RN is in collaboration with the university across the province. And again, every collaboration is different, but the universities alone could not accommodate the numbers of nurses required out there in practice. So that's why this, does that make sense? Am I? Okay. Yes, yes. So. How, how it works, our faculty at Fanshawe have the same credentials as required by Western. Many of us are adjunct assistant professors at Western, as I am, many of our faculty are. Our courses are developed collaboratively. We have collaborative course teams. Um, so say if I'm, I'm teaching a course at Fanshawe, I will work very closely with my partner at Western. So. Um, Different schools, different programs. We have a, a large number of allied health programs. So our interprofessional experiences at Fanshawe have the potential of being different than here, but students can travel back and forth. So I'll just see if any of this. My what? Oh, and our open house is today at Fanshawe. Oh, how could I forget that? So our open house at Fanshawe today is a drop-in thing. It's open till 2 o'clock, and we have students over there. Some of our students are going to do double duty today. We have faculty there, and our clinical education suite is open as well. Okay, we but just okay. want to get a couple more questions in here. So maybe if we have more questions about the uh, differences between Western and Fanshawe, we can ask those after. So we just have a couple more here we want to get to. So how many years is the nurse practitioner program, and what year would you start? For the nurse practitioner, it's a graduate level program now, so you need to have your BSCN, then you need to at least work for uh, two years full time, and then you can apply to that program, and it's a two year full time program. Great. And one more here, and then we'll have one from the web, and that will be the last one. All right. Uh, I'm asking, 
that's another difference question with the releasing the Fanshawe and Western. Are the fees the same? And is the fees the same? The fees are the same. Okay. Well, almost the same. There's the activity fee within both the tuitions are a little bit different, but other than that, the fees are the same. You get a Western card here as well too. Access to the facilities. The average entry, um, both the same. Like you said, around 88 for both of them. Strive for 88. I'm not going to say it's going to be 88, but strive for 88 or higher. And then uh, Justin or Abe might be able to answer this one. Are job opportunities greater for male nurses? <laughs> um, it, it's it's an unfortunate thing uh, that uh, our culture continues to look at men naturally as leaders. Um, it's great for us. I mean, it's given me lots of opportunity. It's maybe not the most uh, equitable thing. But uh, yes, uh, there is uh, definitely a relationship between uh, your gender in nursing and uh, where you go on and what you go on to do. So yeah, there's, there tends to still be a little bit more opportunity for men in nursing. We have to get finished up. So if there are any more questions, uh, we can come up and ask here. We have to Thank you for your in. time. Yeah, we'll be outside at the booth to talk or down at the front as well. Thank you.